Welcome to the BooksByBethel.com Authors Corner Podcast, where we explore the diverse voices of the Bahamas and the West Indies. Join us for insightful conversations with authors who bring unique perspectives to the literary scene. Here's your host, Terry Bethel. Well, welcome to our viewers today. Thank you so much for stopping by Books by Bethel's Authors Corner, a podcast where we celebrate authors from the Bahamas and the Caribbean. Today, we have a wonderful guest uh, by the name of Mr. Gerard Horton. Mr. Horton has written a wonderful book, and he's going to get into it and tell us about his journey, a, a little bit about himself, because we can't we can't really appreciate the story unless we know a bit about the author and then the book. So, Mr. Horton, thank you for joining us today on this platform. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Bethel. It's a real pleasure of mine to be here. Thank you for inviting me to, to this platform. Beautiful. So, Mr. Horton, I know a bit of your story, and I find it very compelling, uh, quite intriguing, quite helpful. I, I see it as a healing bomb. Actually, when I first read your description on, on the Amazon page, um, I went through to your book book, the preview, I wanted to get a taste of what you were writing and, and, and where your heart was. And I must say, I was, I think I told you, I was just moved to tears um, because it just warmed my heart, um, your story, to see what you went through and, and, and your vision, your mission. And so I would like you, Mr. Horton, to just tell us, tell your, our viewers a little about yourself, who you, who are you? Uh, what is your background? And um, then you can lead into why you wrote this book. Well, thank you very much again. Um, well, I'm from Long Island, the beautiful island of uh, Long Island here in, that, in the Bahamas. And um, I grew up there um, until I was about 11 or 12. And I came to Nassau to, to high school. I lived with uh, my siblings. We have a very big family, um, nine children all together, mom and dad. Yes. <laughs> and um, I came down to attend high school, Queens College, at about 11, 12 years of age. And um, I spent seven years there um, as a boarding student at the Queens College Hostel. Oh. Um, before I left Queens, I, I had become the risen to head boy at our school and uh, once I graduated in around the uh, mid seventies, I um, I went to work at the central bank, and that's where I spent uh, much of my adult life working at the central bank. And um, when I retired um, from the bank, I had this desire, obviously, to to do things, what to do, and so on. And um, that's when I I began looking at the sort of things I I always had in my heart to do to learn how to write mm. and um there's a story in how that all came about um if if i could say briefly for our listeners sure i must tell you i had i became a believer in christ a christian i was 18 years of age and i always had this desire to hear the voice of god mm. god reading the stories in the in the bible how god spoke to the um uh, the prophets and others and they knew exactly what to do where to go mm -hmm. And I said, um, would God speak to me in that way to provide direction for my life? And um, I had that desire from as a teenager, mm -hmm. uh, running the streets of Nassau sometimes, just asking him, calling out to, to, to God in that way, to desiring him and to, for him to speak to me. And he did, of course, across the years in many ways. Um, but the audible voice escaped me. And I remember about two, a year or so before retirement, I had an amazing uh, experience, an encounter that I will never forget. And it has inspired my life. And I was, I was standing before a painting, a work of art in the Central Bank Gallery. Right. And um, <clears throat> I had been praying the past previous weeks to just asking God and worshiping and, and, and praying and asking him uh, for his voice in my heart. What did it sound like? And 
as I stood before that painting, that, that sculpture that day, amazed by the gifts and creativity of the artists, I think that maybe on some level, I was desiring to do what he did with the sculpture and the artist says, wow, what creativity. And, and that's when I heard an audible voice of God in my heart. And he said many wonderful things. He said to me, you don't have to be jealous of him. I can do the same in your life. I'm waiting to pour out my grace to saturate your heart and mind, your whole being with my spirit. Wow. To flow in you like a river of compassion, washing, cleansing, healing. I'm waiting to help you stand as an oracle of love, a creative soul speaking to the issues of life with wisdom out of the flow of the river. I'm waiting for you. I was just, I had goosebumps. <laughs> and uh, when he had finished speaking those words, all I could mutter, barely, because my lips were numb, thank you, Lord. Thank you. And I, I ran around the gallery and I rushed to sit down at my office to write down the words I had heard so plainly. It was bubbling up from deep within my soul. Wow. And um, that was the beginning, really. I wrote down those words and the, the numbness of my, my lips, my tongue left me. Mm. Um, there's a lot to that story. But the point is that that was an experience that I will never forget and that transformed my outlook and uh, continues to inspire my life and the things that I, I do. And in fact, launched me into writing this first book, which um, um, I will talk to you about. Right. So that is incredible. And and um, so many of us uh, believers long for to hear the the audible voice of God. Uh, and we do hear his voice. We just sometimes don't recognize his voice, but it's that audible that was so beautiful to hear him speak to you. And I think he spoke to you later. I think um, you, well, he was speaking to you all along because he was guiding you, but I mean, um, where you recognized the audible voice of God, but it was more, um, if I'm not mistaken, you can correct me in your story. You were going through a very dark time in your life with, with so many family members going through trials and uh, uh, unimaginable trials in their health. And, and then you kind of stepped into that while still grieving, you kind of stepped into that same place as well. Uh, could, could you expound on that? Because I think that really hinges um, where this book comes from, where this was really birthed as an expression and, and flowed out of you. We all, as, art, as authors, we all have that trip switch um, when we write um, by inspiration. It seems to me that although you always wanted to be a writer, going through those challenges, going through those dark nights of the soul, that, that was like your trip switch and you needed to um, later on express it to move on uh, from that position. So if you would expound on that, I would appreciate it. Yes. Um, the story I've just told, I think, planted the seed in me that perhaps I could write, I could do something. And uh, the the experiences that you've alluded to um, were, in fact, as you call it, a trip switch in, in many ways. Um, so many things converged. Um, this is a, 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 a bit later from the story I just told you. Uh, so many things converged to send me to a place of some despair, I would say. I've, I've listed some of those in the introduction to the book, Nuggets of Grace. But yes, um, I also believe that those events were like a kind of, if I could think of it as some, even though that God used those to kind of nudge me, to push me to begin to do what I have done. Um, you know, that's the story of the disciples at Jerusalem. They were very content to be in that place of comfort. and uh, But God had a different, um, a broader 
agenda for them in mind. And so they they suffered the persecution and so on that moved them out of their place of comfort. And maybe in some little way that was what happened when I had all those uh, things, um, the illness of my, my siblings, uh, my own illness, uh, and then there were some other um, experiences that all seemed to converge uh, to to kind of move me. And then looking for for some way out of that, um, I found that refuge in in God and in my faith. You know, some people might decide to to do other things. They introduce external stimulus, whether they go for a drink or they go. Um, whatever you like to do or do or do to kind of assuage your your sadness mm -hmm. i found that 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 my default setting if i can use that term was really my faith and and the more i i i thought through this or experienced it went through this i found those those um reminders those tenets of my belief those scriptures that i'd learned or and, and they just just came to the fore and um, so that was the stimuli, the, the motivation for me to, to explore, um, as you will, will see, um, through poetry and, um, and uh, much reflection on, on many um, um, themes of faith. Right. Um, we should have asked, I should have asked you to just hold up Nuggets of Grace, let people see that beautiful cover. Oh, and yes. Can you can you see it? Yes, hold it back a little bit. You're putting it a little too close to the camera. Okay, oh, there you go. Okay, there so you are. nuggets of grace, and there's actually a story behind that story, uh, behind that cover design. Would you share that with um, our viewers? Yes. Um, this this is a this design was um, made by an artist, Mrs. Hokinson, all the way in um, Rochester, Minnesota, when I was at the Mayo Clinic in 2020 for medical care, I ran across this little greeting card in the um, sort of gift uh, area at the hospital uh, campus there. And I was so struck by it because it has a, um, as you can see, it has a black background. And I said, wow, that that matches um, my state or the state of, of sadness and despair. Mm. But if you notice, there's, there's this wonderful picture of a bird resting on a vine and it's a green and, and golden, as if there's a light shining in the darkness. Mm. And uh, the bird is just for that moment at rest and it's rejuvenating itself. And we could imagine, um, in fact, one of the entries in, in the book deals with this idea of taking flight. It'll take flight. It's resting now. But in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the, the darkness of, of our despair, there is the light of, of God and um, that shines through. And this, this sort of um, really uh, said to me um, what I was experiencing and what my hope was as I uh, went through um, my time of medical care away from home. Right. And so there, um, did you write during this time you were experiencing the challenges in your health or was it after the fact that you got the, the green light in your health that, that you started to write? No, I started writing this book um, well before I went to Minnesota. Okay. Uh, I was able uh, to... I was almost finishing up and at the time when my care had, had ended, I um, found time because I was, we were on lockdown after I'd finished my uh, treatments at, at the Mayo Clinic, suddenly the borders were closed and I couldn't come home for another two months. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I spent the time um, just writing some final parts of it and um, making contact with the publisher by, again, by the grace of God, it was so to be um, while I was there. Right. What what kind of, um, we have new authors or people who have gone through um, their own challenges, 
who say, I have to tell my story, just like you, you are telling your story. What, 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 what kind of routine do you think, uh, what did you, what kind of routine did you go to go through while writing this? Did you have a, a set schedule or did you just work on inspiration? How, how did you go through the process of writing your book? Well, I didn't really have a set schedule. I, I am, I'm now retired, so I tend tend to do. Uh, I guess you can have a lot of flexibility in how you manage your time, but I'm usually kind of in the nighttime. I would be working. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, how I approach this, um, as I said to you, there are there are poems. They were the kind of uh, first stage of this book. So I found time, I found inspiration um, many times uh, just around my home. Um, God showed me things that I'd never seen before, quote unquote, um, and um, took note of them for the first time. And um, they found their way in my story of, of coming out of, of, of despair, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the reflections I, I, I wrote many times on my knees in my bedroom in nighttime and uh um and that's how it went sometimes it was um lengthy periods of waiting waiting for um inspiration to write but all and sometimes the the inspiration um just flowed i knew when i looked read it i says my goodness i couldn't have written that because it was such uh, clarity and such excellence and i knew that it was inspired in those times for sure um, so that's how, how it went. And there came a point where I, I felt I was emptied. I, I, I wrote the poems and then I had this unction to, to reflect on what they meant. And so that's how it went. And all of the, all of the chapters or entries follow that pattern of, of, um, of poems and reflections. Sometimes we, we, um, we write and leave the interpretation up to others. And that's that's one way of doing it. But I I felt so inspired that I wanted to share what my thoughts were, what those those words evoked in me. Right. And so um that's how how I proceeded. And there came a time, a, a passage that I had to rewrite, but there came a time when I knew I had done and written everything that God inspired in me to write in this book. So you you just you just allowed him to empty yourself as you poured into your writing. How long did that process take from start to finish? Some people say several months. Some people say several years. Um, how did when you first got your uh, your thoughts, whatever was to come out of you onto um, the manuscript? How long did that take? And then how long did it take for you from from that point to get your book actually published? Well, I think the whole process uh, from start to finish and all the involvement with the publishers, um, finding one and going through that whole process, it may have been about four and a half years. Oh, my. Yeah. OK. So it was it was not a not a quick process for me. OK. But, but it's very gratifying to complete it. I would imagine. So we often say that when you have uh finally published your book it feels like giving birth so yes. men even know what it's like to have a baby you know yes. you, just, you push that you push that and it's and it's a part of you that's gone out and even so when you push that book out you are a little some people most people are a little timid because then you're wondering um will it be how will this be received um, do you find yourself uh, in any way feeling that way? Did you feel that way initially until you started getting the feedback from your readers? I really felt so good about this because it, it was a very important to me to finish this. I could not let it go. And um, I pick it up and I read it often. And I said, my goodness, did I write that? Because um, it was really very meaningful to me. I, this is new to me, the whole idea of promoting myself or promoting the book in right. the public, public sphere. Uh, so I I can't say that I've been so um, 
uh, maybe there's more I could have done or should have done. <laughs> well, it's but, not over. You're still doing it. Yeah, <laughs> you're, yeah. You're, 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 actually, we're engaged in a form of it now by sharing the message of your book. Um, yes. You have been doing it. Uh, and you have been getting a lot of positive feedback. Um, would you care to share any of that feedback with our viewers? Well, yes, uh, I've I've had um, I've had very uh, encouraging responses from um, my pastor. He has read it. Uh, he has offered to comment on commented on it on the on Amazon. Um, uh, within my own family, uh, I, I've been so grateful for the support and the excitement, especially my my sister uh, Adrilla. She she has been amazing. She's been my cheerleader with this book, and the others that I've talked to, my friends, um, uh, they they're very uh, proud of what I had done, and have been very very supportive and encouraging in their their comments. Um, but I'm especially grateful for the, the reaction and support of my pastor at our church. And uh, he was so eager to, he said, Gerard, you've got to, you've got to get it out there, you know, <laughs> get this word out there. So I think that's one of the challenges authors face. Um, uh, I'm a publisher, as you know, and I help authors, whether they've been, they've been published by my company or not, we help authors to market their book. We provide the tools, we provide the insights to help people to get their books out there. And one of the chief concerns is, is they publish the book, but they don't get the book to where others can really benefit. And when they do, then it's a snowball. It's like, oh my goodness, I'm so encouraged. I, I was I was feeling a little disheartened because not every bookstore saw my vision. Not every bookstore wanted to take it. Not um, everybody uh, wanted to buy it. And I was, I had a fear of rejection. And um, to see them grow from strength to strength in, in their um, acceptance of recognizing that this book was worth writing. So it's worth marketing pushing, letting other people benefit from the gems that are in there. And and I recall you telling me a few stories about people who you have come up with and, and how it really encouraged you. And it's a thread because other authors have told me the same thing. They said, you know, I was I was ready to give up. I was ready to give up because I did not know what step to take next but I was encouraged by, by the people who did buy it and what they said. And I feel now that I have to get this book into more hands because that was the reason why I wrote it. And I find that most, Mr. Horton, most people who are writing books, they're not the most people that we publish for and I know, they're not writing books to get rich. rich. They're, getting, they're writing books to get the message out but there's nothing wrong with benefiting in the process um, so that we can write more books um, and get more good material out there. Because the fact of the matter, the truth is that the content, especially in your book, somebody having a dark night of the soul, somebody going through terror and anguish in, on any level could be empowered and be encouraged by reading just the uh, just the first few chapters of your book, much less going through it. You know, it was it it you were a, a vessel that God was pouring through, and it was unfortunate that you went through what you went through and your family went through. But you just you 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 were a good steward over that of what you went through, and you put pen to paper and you created this book, and so I am just encouraging people just to. Get a hold of this book. You can get it in ebook. You can get it uh, in paperback. You can get it on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. Um, the once you Google Nuggets of Grace, Gerard Horton, you'll see a a list of different areas, um, uh, platforms that you can buy this book from. But yes. it is a wonderful book, like he said. 
he, Mr. Horton is saying that he is reading this book several times. So if he could read it as a writer, can you imagine how you as a reader can benefit from um, reading this book? So we would encourage you to, to certainly get yourself a copy of this, this book, but this is not the end of the story. I, I don't want you to think that this is over. I want to find out from you, Mr. Horton, you are obviously quite well read as well. Your writing style, was that inspired by any particular writer? Not really, just motivated by the desire to write well. My sister, one of my sisters who, who passed away in 2020, Miriam, um, she, she, she died while I was seeking um, medical care treatment for, um, I can say, um, tell you, for prostate cancer in, in Minnesota. I was away. Right. And um, she she died before I could come home again. And um, she was telling me, she said, Gerard, I've been trying during her illness. She, she said, I'm trying to find a book to read. And she showed me something she'd purchased from one of the bookstores. She says, look at this. And what she showed me, she said, well, it's not... There were, there were lots of editing and mistakes and poor grammar and stuff. And I said, uh, she says, no, you don't do that. You write well. <laughs> you write it. You write it well, you know. So I always, I, I mentioned that in the book, I, I comment. Um, so I was motivated by my desire to to be clear. When I went to university, um, we were told, um, was this thing my English teacher said, hard writing makes easy reading. And so I was trying my best to be clear, to be as, as simple as I could, um, so that it would be easy for readers to, to um, uh, digest and to understand. That is very important. That is yeah. extremely important because first-time writers, sometimes they feel that they have to sound intelligent rather than yeah. just reading, rather than just writing for the simplest mind to comprehend as yes. well as the intelligent um, person to to appreciate and so and and yes there are it is a concern seeing the typos uh in books and it's really a roadblock and it's a turn off nobody wants to see those uh, yes. even the greatest books you will find I'm sure um, your publisher might have told you even the greatest book you might find some little you know little yes. or something in there. Yes, so, and, and um, she did. You know, she did mention that, um, Mrs. Bethel. She did say, "Well, you know, you won't get get them all, but it, it sort of uh, makes you human." You know, someone picks it up, says, "Okay, I can see that." But um, yeah. so that's how she she um, she kind of helped me get over that that desire to be perfect on this. She says, you know, we'll, you'll see some still perhaps, but it 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 humanizes you, she said. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course you have to get your, your uh, work professionally edited, you know, yes. and that helps to knock out a whole lot of things because once we start writing and we read over and over and over and over, our eyes are really trained to see um, and overlook the errors and so, it's always good to have another set of eyeballs checking your work, um, as I'm sure you did. Mr. Horton, if you, I, I, I ask some authors this question, um, especially authors who read, you know, um, do you have a favorite author yourself um, or a type of book that you do like to read? Well, I have a lot of books. Um, they're all, more, many of them are in the um, genre of spiritual, how do you say it? Um, self-help? Some self-help, yes. Um, but they, they are this, this, I like, I like stories of, uh, of, of drama. I like human interest stories. I mean, um, and a lot of books I have are kind of, of the sort I've written, um, spiritually uh, motivating mm -hmm. material. I I'm very much enjoy a lot of contemporary writing and, and news stories, things like that, which um, help me to understand people. 
mm -hmm. and uh, and the experiences of of, of others. So I, I don't know. That... Sorry, Sorry, Mr. Hood, but I think that's what um, that might be a key factor in why you write in such a transparent way, because those are the things that you love. Those are the things that um, whether you felt it at the time you were writing it, you wanted people to get your message. And that's why you were able to write so cleanly and so um, concisely. And so your the, your reading style has affected your writing style indirectly. It seems, it seems so. Yes, yes, yes. That's that's amazing. Um, I got to ask you this too. If you had an opportunity to meet any one of the authors that you follow, that you have read and uh, uh, admired their book, if they said um, you you could invite any two of them to your house for dinner. What which two would those be? No, you've done it. Um. <laughs> uh, you don't tell me you're like um, um. you know you read the books but you don't remember the author but but you do really appreciate what they wrote. Yes, I I have um, I was just fascinated by the lucidity and the clarity with which uh, many of them write. I quoted two of them. I think one of the women has, has passed on now. Timothy Keller was a, um, he was a pastor, he was a minister, a Presbyterian uh, minister, I think, in New York. He's founded churches and he's done uh, lots of writing. I mean, I mean, amazing how he, um, God used him to, to write and to share uh, insights into the gospel and to this whole uh, Christian life uh, experience. I asked you that. Um, I asked a, a young man the same question. And he said, one of them has to be King Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> he said, so, I, and I never really thought of it. He said, but man, that book, Songs of Solomon, is something else. He, that man could write. And so. Uh, yes. He was very transparent, too, about his life. I, if you notice in the, the books. Yeah of the Bible, um, uh, Ecclesiastes, and uh, this this idea of trying to find meaning and uh, in life. And he, he, he had it all. He had knowledge. He had the wisdom God gave him. Mm -hmm. And he didn't uh, always use it um, in proper ways. And he spent a life searching for um, meaning at so many um places along the way, and he found them to be um, meaningless. <laughs> and I think he came to the conclusion that we we come to as believers that that he has to look above the sun for the meaning um, that his his soul uh, sought so desperately in the in this world. So um, yeah, I would say Solomon, when he came to wisdom through a lot of the things that he he endured or experienced. Absolutely. Now, um, I want to tap into your wisdom, what you've gone through now with writing the book. What, how would you guide other people? What words of wisdom do you have to guide other people who feel that they have a story to tell, but they don't know what to do? Um, is there anything you can tell them? You know, they're watching you now and they're saying, man, I got a story to tell, but I don't even know where to start. What would you say to those people? Well, um, you see, I didn't think I could write. I mean, I've I've lived for many years in my work life. I I did writing, but I didn't think so seriously that I could write something uh, like this. Um, I started with the idea. As I said, the book started writing poems, and somebody says that um, poetry is the window to the soul and a window to the soul. And I said, well, if that is so, uh, all of these poems, if you really get to know me, the backstory, they come out of a, a, a place, a personal experience of life. And I think, so in that sense, I think we're all poets. We're all, we can all be writers in that sense because we all have stories and experiences to share. That's where it began with me. I was just writing these poems. I didn't really, um, know how far it would go. And so I, I started with what I I sensed was 
a part of me um, to find expression for what was going on in my life, to put it on paper, even if I couldn't find um, somebody to to share them with. Mm -hmm. And that's where it began. And But as I went on, I realized that I was writing something which there was something else. There, there was something else to say. And I I call the reflections on the poems in the book the the um, stone that you throw in the puddle of the pond and, and their ripples go out. And that's how that developed for me. But I would simply say, you you have a gift, you have a, 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 a gift. And I think you start there to find expression of the things. If, if you go through life and you don't examine it, you unexamine life, then I think you, you, you're doing yourself a disfavor, you know. So you begin where you are planted, where your your giftings are, and you begin to to develop them uh, at that level. It may be that that's all you can say for that moment, but it will take you. It'll inspire you to to look further, to go further. I believe that's what happened to me um, in my accomplishment of this this um, this project. There you have it. You heard it. So I, I, the only thing I can add to that is while you're doing this introspection, keep your paper handy, just like how Mr. Mr. Horton was on his knees and uh, in prayer, and he got some downloads that he was able to document. So don't take it for granted. You have a have a notepad and and write your thoughts and or 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 do it on the the computer. Write them out. Diarize. And then you can put it together. A good editor can help you to put it together. And of course, you can find um, a great uh, publisher. We are, we are also publishers of family-friendly content. And so we thank you all for being here. Mr. Horton, I want to thank you so much for joining me on the platform. And we wish you all the best in your endeavors with, with uh, Nuggets of Grace. Could you hold it up one more time? Let our... Uh, audience, yes. yes, nuggets of grace now available. Is are they in any uh, local stores in the Bahamas? Yes, they are. Um, you can purchase the book at Logos in the Logos bookstore in the um, Harbor Bay oh. Shopping Center. That's that's the only location they are. I I have um, been communicating with another bookstore, um, perhaps soon in Bible bookstore in. Palmdale area, um, I will arrange to place some there as well. Okay, well, you heard it. Thank you both. Thank you, Mr. Horton, for joining with us. Thank you, viewers. And until next time, blessings to you. Thank you for having me, Mrs. Bethel. Thank you for tuning into the Author's Corner podcast, brought to you by BooksByBethel.com, your go to author's directory, and InspirePublishing.org, empowering self publishing authors. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more inspiring conversations with amazing authors. Until next time, keep reading and keep writing.